Hello and welcome back. We're here today with a 2022 Chevy Bolt EUV Premier. We're going to do the inside EVs 70 mile an hour highway range test. I'm fully charging this guy up to 100%. Going to hop out on the highway and drive at a constant 70 miles an hour as we do with all the EVs that we do in this range test to see just how far the 2022 Bolt EUV goes. Now, since this is the Premier trim, it has the wheels that are specific to the Premier. They're 17 inch wheels. The LT comes with 17 inch wheels also, but it's a specific design and it comes with the Michelin Energy Star 215.50 R17 inch tires. I'm gonna hop out onto the highway now and see how far this guy goes. But first, don't forget, click that subscribe button and ring the notification bell so you don't miss any upcoming content here on the Inside EVs YouTube channel. All right, well, I'm out on the highway cruising along at 70 miles an hour. So figure we'll talk a little bit about what we do to set up these range tests so it's fair and we can compare vehicle to vehicle. All right, so I said we're in a 2022 Chevrolet Bolt EUV. And uh, what is an EUV? Well, GM came up with a new acronym as if we needed another one. It's an electric utility vehicle. It's not that much different from the regular Bolt EV. It's slightly bigger, it's longer. It's about six inches longer. And although it has about the same cargo capacity, just a little bit more cargo capacity, but where you feel the interior room is in the rear seats, it has about three inches more leg room than a Bolt EV. And it actually feels like it's even more than three more inches. The back seats are really roomy. So this is, a, I guess, a better uh, vehicle for a family, let's say, where you have kids in the back and they're going to frequently be using the back seats. If you don't have kids and you're using the Bolt as a commuter car, the Bolt EV might even be a better choice because you know, honestly the cargo capacity is very similar. You really feel the difference in the back seating area and that's when you're going to have rear passengers. That makes a difference. Okay, so we're in a Bolt EUV. It has the same powertrain as the Bolt EV, a 200 horsepower uh, motor, it's front wheel drive, and it has a 65 kilowatt hour battery pack, same battery pack as the Bolt EV. GM lets you use a, a very large or a high percentage of the total capacity. Maybe we'll find out today because the Bolt EV and EUV does show you how many kilowatt hour is used in that trip. So when I'm done, we'll be able to take a look at the settings and see exactly how many kilowatt hour we used in this 100 down to zero range test. Okay, so what do we do to the vehicles to get them ready for the range test? Well, the first thing was last night I set the tire pressure to the manufacturer's specified tire pressure. When I get in it this morning after fully charging it at a DC fast charger to try to get the battery nice and warm, although that won't be too necessary today because it's a nice warm day. Uh, it started out today early in the morning and it was already 70 degrees and we're going to get up into the 80s today. So excellent range uh, temperature here in New Jersey. Uh, I also set the climate control to somewhere between 68 and 70 degrees. I set it at 70 degrees because the Bolt, the Bolt's uh, climate control system is very robust. At 68 degrees where I usually set the cars, it's, it was too cold. So I have it 70, nice and comfortable, and on fan setting one, that's the lowest fan setting. Now the Bolt doesn't have like an eco driving mode, uh, so I'm just in the normal driving mode. I don't have the one pedal uh, driving mode said that it does have like a one pedal driving mode and a uh, sport driving mode. I, I obviously I'm not going to drive in sport, uh, but I don't have the one pedal driving mode. All that does is really increase the regenerative braking. And for a 70 mile an hour highway range test, we don't slow down that much. I only slow down when uh, I'm making the turns because I do uh, all these range tests on the same course on long loops up and down the New Jersey Turnpike. And we do that to try to offset any elevation change or, and also any wind. If there's wind in any one direction, you want to get it pushing you as well as, uh, you know, uh, a headwind. So you kind of balances out. 
Uh, and speaking of which, there's like no wind today. There's like a one mile an hour wind coming from the south. So uh, unless that changes, and we'll monitor it for the whole trip, wind is not going to be an issue at all today. All right, so we're all set up. We're cruising down the turnpike. I'll check in when we're about 75% state of charge. I like to check in every 25% state uh, of, the, of the trip. And I said about because one thing that really bothers me with the Bolt is it doesn't have a numeric state of charge display. You can't even find it in the settings anywhere. It just shows you a bar that you can kind of guess when you're about 75% state of charge. So that really bothers me that I can't give an exact mile at each 75, 25, 50, uh, all those and down to zero. Um, I will be able to do it at zero because zero, zero, when the car is in reduced power mode and really won't, uh, doesn't have a good pedal response, the range test is over. Uh, but the, the check-ins are going to be about where they should be. I'm not going to be able to dial it in exactly every 25%. And that bothers me, I, not just for the range tests. That would really bother me if I had a bolt. I like to have an exact measurement. And the car knows that. It should be in a setting somewhere so people that are interested in it can see it. Uh, you know, if you're not interested, you don't have to look at it. It doesn't have to be front and center on the driver's display. But give me the numeric state of charge somewhere in the car. So if I want to take a look at it, I can. And Chevy doesn't do that with the Bolt, and uh, that bothers me. All right, so we're going to check in uh, when we're at about 75% state of charge, and we'll see where we're at. All right, we're at about 75% state of charge, and we have driven 61 miles. We have a consumption rating of 3.7 miles per kilowatt hour, although for most of that first section it was bouncing between 3.6 and 3.7 it just happened to end up at 3.7 right when I took the picture and we were at about 75% state of charge but since it's dropped back down to 3.6 so I kind of think we're right around maybe 3.65 uh, miles per kilowatt hour and it's on that edge so we'll have to keep an eye on the consumption rate when we check in at 50% Okay, so 61 miles driven is really good for the first quarter of the trip. If that were to continue, we'd finish up with around 244 miles driven. The combined EPA range rating for the Bolt EUV is 247 miles, a little bit less than the Bolt EV, which is 259. And the highway EPA range rating for the Bolt EUV is 223 miles. So we're on pace to get somewhere between the highway range rating and the combined EPA range rating. Now we always use the EPA range rating as sort of a measuring stick, but I do want to explain that we're not trying to disprove EPA. It's a different test protocol. It's a different method of testing. So even though we always use the EPA numbers sort of as a measuring stick when we do these range tests, we're not trying to say that, you know, the EPA doesn't uh, test the vehicles properly or that that EPA range rating isn't something you should pay attention to because it is. It's just range is such a moving target. You can do 10 range tests and get 10 different results. So use the EPA figures use what we give you, use what you observe, you know, you kind of take all of that data together and it'll give you the best idea of what you can expect under different conditions, driving your electric vehicle, all electric vehicles, not just the Bolt EV. And there's one other thing I wanna mention before we check out uh, that I forgot to mention earlier. One of the things we always do when we test the, te uh, the EVs is we check the speedometers to GPS. And in the case of the Bolt EUV, 70 miles an hour displayed was 70 miles an hour according to my two GPS apps. So I have the Super Cruise set at 70 miles an hour. Yes, the EUV has a Super Cruise as the option, which I've been using here today. Works really well. The only thing that I will complain about it is it does have driver monitoring, which I like. I prefer when the driver is monitored as opposed to just a torque sensor on the steering wheel that every now and then you tug on it and that's fine, it'll just keep going. But what I will say is it's a little too sensitive for my liking. It just keeps disengaging because 
I'm not paying attention when I am paying attention. And uh, if I, I picked up a Luna bar to eat it, to have a little snack, and I looked at the, uh, the label for a second before I tore it open, and it disengaged because I wasn't watching the road for that second. Meanwhile, when I did that, I started this range test pretty early today. There's nobody on the road that I could even see, and I'm driving in the middle lane, so there's no cars around me, and for you know one second, I'm looking at my Luna bar to tear it open, and it shuts off. So to me, if, if that's how it's gonna function, I would not get Super Cruise. Uh, it, it, if it can't help me out for that one second when I'm grabbing a piece of paper or something, uh, then to me, it's just not worth having. I, I'm, I'm all for driver monitoring, and I think that there needs to be driver monitoring for these um, ADAS systems. You shouldn't be able to climb into the back seat and let the car drive you know, on its own. That, that should not be allowed. But I think they have the, tuned a little too strict here in the Bolt EUV. I think the lawyers maybe uh, took control a little bit too much because quite honestly, if this is how it's gonna function, to me, it would not help me in my long drives and uh, I would not pay for it in, in this current iteration. When it's working, it works great. And uh, when it doesn't shut itself off because it thinks you're not paying attention. And I want, another thing that I'll note with it, it really works well. I put my sunglasses on and purposely like look down. Now again, I'm, I'm, I'm peripherally looking at the road. There's no cars around me, not a lot of traffic today, a little bit more traffic now. I did this earlier and it can read through my sunglasses and it saw that my eyes were not on the road and it just beeps and shuts off. Uh, and I don't like how it just abruptly shuts off. I'd much prefer something like how Tesla, it, it, it gives you a visual warning and then it beeps for a long time before it disengages. It gives you time to either figure out what you're doing or grab the wheel. This shuts off too quickly. And uh, I, I just, when it works, it works great. I really like it. Uh, it's a true hands-free system. You don't have to have your hands on it. It does need the um, to have the, the roads mapped, though. It's not all visual or LiDAR or whatever. It, it, it relies on the, the high-precision mapping, so it can only operate on roads that have the high-precision maps. The New Jersey Turnpike does, and I've been using it for most of the day. It's just every time I reach over to pick up a piece of paper or something, it shuts off, and it's really annoying. <laughs> But in any event, maybe the GM can tweak that and give you a little bit more leeway and still be safe. All right, we'll check back in at 50% and see where we're at. All right, we're at 50% state of charge. We're halfway home and we have driven 117 miles. We have a consumption rating now of 3.6 miles per kilowatt hour. It's kind of what I expected. Uh, as I said earlier, we were bouncing between 3.6 and 3.7 for the first quarter of the test, and uh, we're settling in at 3.6. It's been pretty much 3.6 miles per kilowatt hour this whole 25% of the trip. So we didn't go quite as far. We went 56 miles in that quarter as opposed to the 61 that we did from 100% down to 75%, but we're still on pace for a good result. If we were to duplicate this in the second half, we'd finish up with 234 miles driven, kind of right in between the uh, highway EPA range rating and combined EPA range rating. I think that would be a good showing for the Bolt EUV. Uh, it is great range weather today. As I mentioned earlier, we're now up to about 80 degrees, which is excellent range weather and there's almost no wind. It's between one and two miles an hour. I just keep checking it and that's really negligible. So uh, super range weather, cruising down the New Jersey Turnpike at true 70 miles an hour. I'm gonna check in at 25%. We'll see where we're at, but for now, I think the Bolt EUV is doing pretty well and we're gonna end up with a good result. Checking in at 25% state of charge. We have now covered 174 miles. So that means from 50% down to 25% state of charge, we drove 57 miles. Just about the same as from 75% down to 50%. So we're on pace to end up with right around 230 miles, which would be good in my opinion for the Bolt EUV. Our consumption rate has crept back up 
to 3.7 miles per kilowatt hour. And for our friends in Europe or anybody that follows a metric system as opposed to the imperial system, that's 16.75 kilowatt hour per 100 kilometers driven. So yeah, um, we're on pace to do around 230 miles. I'll take that, I think it's pretty good for the Bolt EUV. This is a, a great little family run around e e electric vehicle. And you know, uh, it's affordable as it is. Now we're in the Bolt Premier here, and then there's a Bolt LT, which is the lower trim. This is complete, fully loaded, and it's like $43,000. That's a little expensive for, I think, what this vehicle offers, but the LT trim, you can get it definitely well down into the 30s. It starts at like 33,000, somewhere around there. But the great news is, for the 2023 model year, Chevrolet is dramatically decreasing the price. It's about 6,000 less for the Bolt EUV for the 2023 model year as it was for the 2022, which means you can get the EUV LT for less than $30,000. Now the Premier is still gonna be in the low 30s. I think it starts somewhere around 32 or 33,000. But for a Bolt EUV LT at under $30,000, that is a fantastic value. And uh, the Bolt EV is going to be even less. It starts at, I think, like $26,450, somewhere around $26,500. That is a fantastic deal. Now, GM's probably pressured to do that because they no longer get the $7,500 federal tax credit. So uh, the with the new EVs coming out, the Bolt and the Bolt EUV was starting to be not competitive, in my opinion, at the price point it was at. So this kind of dramatic price decrease. And honestly, the EV and the EUV are fantastic values for what you get at the new price point. So if you're looking for sort of a budget EV, check out the Bolt EV and EUV. The new pricing goes in effect for the 2023 model years, which is gonna be pretty soon. They're gonna be bringing them out within the next couple of months. And you know, we talk a lot about the need for more affordable electric vehicles. That electric vehicles have been historically expensive, more expensive than their gasoline counterparts. And yes, in many instances, the overall total cost of ownership was less because when you factored in incentives and fueling and lower maintenance, but that doesn't help people that can't afford that initial price barrier and they can't afford, say, that extra lease payment. So it's good to see that we're finally getting some affordable electric vehicles. The both EV and EUV, particularly when the 2023 pricing comes out, are both going to be very affordable, good electric vehicles. We're going to be doing our range test on the Bolt EV next. So look for that video in a couple of weeks. But these two EVs are great little runaround family EVs with great range over 230 miles or around 230 miles, we think, at highway speed. So there's a lot you can do. This isn't just an in-town runaround car. You can do a lot with the Bolt EV and EUV. They don't have great DC fast charging characteristics. We're gonna do a full DC fast charge recording of this vehicle next. Um, and, and that has been sort of a, a, a weak point on the Bolt EV and EUV. Uh, but in a pinch, you can road trip it. Uh, you just probably wouldn't wanna be doing it all the time. But most people don't need to. Most people charge at home. And in that context, these are great electric vehicles. Okay, we're gonna check in when the range test is done. We'll see where we're at. Okay, so we made it here to the Electrify America DC fast charging station. This is where it all began this morning. And we ended up with 231 miles driven. So in that last 25% of the range test, we went 57 miles, the same distance that we covered from 50% down to 25%. We ended up with a consumption rating of 3.6 mile per kilowatt hour. Again, it was bouncing between 3.7 and 3.6, but when I rolled in and shut it off, it said 3.6. So I think we're probably somewhere around 3.65-ish 
only because it just kept going between 3.7 and 3.6 miles per kilowatt hour. Another thing I want to note is one of the things I really don't like about the Bolt and Bolt EUV is when you get down to only 10 miles remaining on the estimated range gauge, the estimated range just shuts off and it just says low with a picture of a battery and it tells you that you're in reduced propulsion mode. Quite honestly, it's the only EV that does that and it's extremely annoying and I think it's going to create range anxiety for people people that are new to EVs. Now I wasn't worried because I knew when it said 10 miles, I had 12 miles to go to get here and I knew I could always squeak out a couple more miles past zero. But I think for most people that really will be unnerving and I think it's something that GM needs to change. Every other EV we test that the range estimator just keeps going down until it says zero and usually you can drive a little bit below zero. But on this it just shuts off at 10 miles and just says low and it's really a poor UI in my opinion. I think it just is only going to get people nervous when they're new to EVs and the range gets really low. Now I know one of the reasons why they may do it is because it's hard to really measure the amount of capacity that's left in the battery and, and uh, how far it's going to go at that point so they don't want to mislead someone. But it's okay if it corrects as it goes. I've been in many EVs where we get to the end and it says 10, then I drive a mile and it says 7. Uh, but then it six, five, four, then maybe it'll jump to two, but at least you're, you've got an eye on it and you're watching it. It's rather than just guessing where you are at the end. Um, but one thing that the Bolt and Bolt EUV do that really is good is it shows you how much energy you've used in that trip. And as I mentioned earlier, the Bolt and Bolt EUV have a 65 kilowatt hour battery pack. And I was able to squeeze out 63.6 kilowatt hour in this range test. So I pretty much used all of the usable capacity. All right, well, that's a wrap on the Bolt EUV 70 mile an hour highway range test. We end up with 231 miles. We hope you enjoy these range tests. If you do, please click that subscribe button and ring the notification bell so you don't miss any upcoming content here on the Inside EVs YouTube channel. And thanks for watching.